Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Midwest Whitetail. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch this week. And as you just witnessed, we wanted to kick things off with a moment of silence and recognition of the 22nd anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. To all the men and women who are servicemen, first responders, we greatly appreciate all of you and what you do to make this country what it is. Jumping into the episode, we've got an action-packed one start to finish for you. We're gonna start with going to back to Iowa. Drake and Justin are gonna dive into some food plot updates, talk about some really big bucks that are showing up on camera, and they're gonna give you a sneak peek to the top two bucks that they're trying to get after. Following that, we're gonna go join Tyler Bellman down there in Northeast Missouri. By the time that next week's episode airs, he's actually gonna have already been in the tree stand. They've got a couple of bucks that have been showing up for them, so he's gonna kind of set the stage for opening day. And then by the end of the episode, stick around, Bella Reed has officially tagged her first buck ever out of state. Her, Mike, and Rye have been putting in a ton of effort on that Kansas lease that they share with Chad Holmes. And you're talking about 10 hour drives one way. Couldn't be more happy for them. Super excited to be able to bring a hunt to you guys this early in the season. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and best of luck to you this fall. here on the, I guess we call it the north plot, the main plot. I let this rye seed out this year. So what we're gonna do is burn it off. Um, it'll clean up all this thatch real good for us. And then let that rye seeds, viable seed, it'll come back up. And then if we need to spray some of it off to make our brassicas a little bit, plot a little bigger, we will. But otherwise we'll have rye coming right up right here. So we're gonna get hot here. <laughs> Be our turnips here. Rye is another half acre right here. This turnip used to be cool seasons, but we're gonna map this here. I think we got right about half an acre. Right here, coming from the south, from the house. Plot screen. We'll have corn. We'll put the blind probably right here. This is looking straight west, straight north out there where Justin's planting right now. This will all be green. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up uh, turnip planting on the home farm here today. Um, we got about an acre, oh, about an acre and a third planted today. Just been making improvement after improvement after improvement. Me and Drake have been putting in the sweat equity this summer and we're finally getting down to the tail end of it here. Um, it's August 1st today. Uh, we got some rain coming tonight, so seeds going in the ground and we'll be back here in a couple of weeks watching the rain to fill in and touch up as needed. All right, a little food plot update here at Justin's. He's running back to snag a solar panel to put with the cutty back down here, but um, kind of coming through the gap. This is gonna be the main food plot. We got turnips down here. Um, really good bedding straight to the west and uh, back here we're gonna move the box blind in behind the screen right here with a good screen all the way back to the house so we can slip in get the blind right up over this corn we're gonna leave this corn right here standing for not only late season but for early season but we kind of got a con conglomeration of everything that comes together right here so we got a straight post uh, rub tree whatever we put a pine with an oak on it oak branch on it we got the cutty back looking this way so we're getting this farm set up today getting the cameras out and we're basically done we're gonna stay the heck out of here we'll get some rye in here what you think looking good hope we get good rain here in the next week or two we can get the grain plots filling all these dry areas and give these turnips a boost they're looking good uh, we're a little deficient but we need that rain to get some fertilizer in the ground on them so setup's looking good Get the line moved up there. We're gonna put on like a four foot platform or so. Turnips rolling through. Gonna keep corn here. Gonna have greens surrounding the turnips. Should be the heart of it all right here, boys. See what happens. We're gonna. Everything kind of comes through here. Fence post. Again, northwest wind blows right back here. Straight over the top the of the blind, over to the house. Turnips. And probably some rye out here into more turnips and bedding off to the west so 
gonna be a really really good little hub spot so that camera right there should uh, tell us everything we need to know Looks cash. We could probably get some oak branches in here. All right, guys, just got set number two home here on the 50. This is a cottonwood that sits um, just off the food plot. It's within shooting distance. It's about 35 yards over my shoulder right here. Kind of see it back there. Um, that water hole that we put in is, is right there about 35 yards and then they cross and then they come out into this um, into this hay field behind me or they come up behind behind us on this ridge right here so pumped to have this to have this set home and uh gonna be a good spot like I said kind of run you guys through the through the setup here so up here from the south this is our access coming in off the hay field popping up over the hill coming down this trail right here and it splits off and comes right to the base of the tree here and so coming off that hay field this ridge kind of falls off there's a big trail right here that we've kind of helped create and then uh, leads down into the bottom and either they go into the food plot right there to the water hole or they cross and come out into the field right here so um, this is basically your shot I can kind of hide behind this since this since this uh, cottonwood's so open, but you know, this is your shot, 35 yards to the water hole, food plot's coming in great over there. And Justin's coming down the trail right now. Boop. All the way. Across the creek. Shot right there, don't drop the cutty back and break it. <laughs> and up into the plot. Really looking forward to getting in this set. Probably won't hunt it very much, but we got our other set straight across the creek. Food plot kind of in between, creek in between us. Little destination ag field before they go out to big, big destination. We got a little hay field right here that they like to kind of stage up in before they go across the road or go out to the big ag fields to the north or to the west. So sets up very, very well. I feel like we've got cuttybacks. I mean, we're gonna have six or seven cuttybacks within a 50 acre area. So we have should have this area pretty covered. So looking forward to getting up in this tree come October up guys september 2nd justin and i have been at it all day here between his home farm and uh the 50 getting cutty backs out today so exciting day for us the latest update i think the last time you guys saw us here at the 50 was us seeding this food plot getting it in the ground so as you can see back behind me it's came in very very good we hit the rain just just exactly perfect i think we've got seven cutty backs total that we're going to put on this on this 50 acre farm uh, funny thing, uh, a couple weeks ago, the deer that we called sticks last year, the one I'm looking for at this farm, actually showed up. Um, so we, we got the two deer mixed up, the one with the flyers and all the all the trash and stuff, who we initially thought was sticks. It isn't sticks. Sticks actually showed up. He's got a big bent uh, front leg from his injury last year. So he's you know looking at probably a six, seven, eight year old deer. We're not really sure, but we know he's at least six, uh, maybe even seven. So. Um, he showed up on the north side along with the flyer buck last night. So those are gonna be the two top deer in this area on this farm. This is our update from the 50. So um, <laughs> deer, deer were calling swoops on a different farm. He actually showed up last night as well and uh, uh, hasn't quite shed his velvet. You can tell it's shrinking up. He's getting, he's gonna be our probably, you know, top one or two bucks too. Me and Justin uh, got a set in there with some good access uh, last week, I believe, last weekend when it was about 100 degrees. So got a set in there, um, hung for him. Kind of run you guys through that, how that farm sets up, but um, that's gonna be our update for now. Um, hopefully we get a little bit of rain and uh, this plot should take should take right off. That's all it needs. Looking forward to season. Thanks for watching Middle Swite Tail.
Well, as you guys can probably tell, the entire Midwest Whitetail team, along with Mitch and Justin and myself, have been extremely busy this year. We started back doing the controlled burns early on, rolled into planting our grain sources, and now we have just finished up our green sources and the season's right around the corner. We've had some recent rains and that's allowed these, green, these greens to get up and get going, but uh, we're, we're definitely needing a little bit of a rain on them. Uh, we got rain in the forecast, so hopefully that hits here in the Midwest. Wanted to go over a couple of the deer that we'll be chasing this year and kind of the anticipation moving forward as season's just over a week out and we don't really have a lot of targets that have showed up. I'm up here on the Rawls farm right now. That Prince deer is still active in here. He's hard horn now and coming through uh, sporadically as he'll start making scrapes here anytime, I'm sure. On the main farm, we don't have a lot of targets, but historically, for some reason on that farm, they do not move in until uh, this next week. It's right before season. It seems like I remember last year, Bowser showed up, I believe it was September 14th. Uh, same with uh, the Velveeta deer. And uh, we do have a couple pictures of one of our five-year-olds we'll be chasing a deer we call Swoosh. And then on the Cory farm, nothing out of Bowser yet, but there is a really big eight pointer. And with the cooler temps here in the Midwest that have been coming through, we are starting to notice a lot more buck activity. These deer are coming out of velvet, starting to transition onto these scrapes. For Justin and Mitch and myself, this year we're gonna, we're having the mustaches. That's kind of gonna be a theme from us as we're all three, either newly dads are expecting, Mallory and I are expecting our first child any day now. And uh, we're excited to raise our youth in the outdoors and experience the memories that we've shared with each other so far. Uh, we're going to have a very busy year, but we're excited. We, we have a lot of targets that we feel like we're going to be hunting, and uh, hopefully that all comes to fruition soon. So thanks for joining Midwest Whitetail, and make sure to tune in next week. Well, it's Sunday morning down here at the Lease in Kansas. To tell you guys a little bit about this property, you know, it's a cattle pasture. It's it's a large block. You know, the interesting thing is, and it's very different for me, this is just, it's arid. There's cactus, sage, and then these cedar draws. And so the deer are going to be bedding and concentrated in these thick cedar draws and basically transitioning from cedar draw to cedar draw, mostly feeding on native browse. There's not a lot of tillable. If you look at the aerial really panned out, I mean, there's, there's a little bit of milo up to the north a ways, but it's not like there's tons of ag fields around here. So it's gonna be a little more difficult to have a, the classic bedding to feeding pattern identified um, where you can hunt that transition. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun hunting in the rut just cause they're gonna be running these, these bedding areas, these draws and covering a lot of ground. But some of that early season hunting isn't maybe typically what we would try to do where we're on a green food source or a green bean field. It's gonna be a heavy ground blind uh, area. It's just mostly short cedars, little scrub oaks. Uh, there's not a lot of opportunity for deer stands. There's a few areas we found yesterday. There's some cottonwoods. Of course, there's a few cedar trees that are big enough that we can get off the ground about 10 feet, but it's, it's definitely gonna be a different style of hunting. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to be out here, excited for the challenge. We got everything done that we wanted to. It took a little bit longer, but here we are and excited to see how it turns out and we'll be back for youth season. Hope we can lay down some good buck footage and maybe Bella can get a buck down. All in the room. We are going deer hunting. Isn't that crazy? It's September 1st and we're going deer hunting. Friday, September 1st, we are headed down to Kansas for the opener. Tomorrow's opening day for youth season and Bell's up the bat. Kat and I uh, worked today and then picked up the kids from school and took off. The sun's going down. We're going to get there around midnight, but we're excited to get out and get hunting and hopefully we can get one of those velvet bucks down. I feel like I've improved so much. That's unbelievable, honey. <laughs> First shot was 65 yards. Second shot at 105. Tempest 
drop. And pressure drop. It was a fun first sit. We saw three bucks that I thought were too young to shoot. One of them was in velvet. And tomorrow, hopefully, I get to shoot one of the big boys. Well, it's Sunday morning, and the sun is coming up. We got up early and slipped in here, and we're just overlooking this big cedar bottom. And we had a camera down here earlier in the summer and had quite a bit of morning activity. We're just gonna make a short hunt this morning and then regroup for the afternoon. So we'll see if we get anything in range. Coming out in Kansas. Sun is setting. Bell's gonna kill a big buck tomorrow.
There's a cool little critter. Saturday is September 9th, and we are back at the lease in Kansas. Cut out of work a little bit early yesterday, where I picked up Bella from school, and we were able to hit the road by two and make decent time. We got here between 10 and 11. And we actually slipped out and hunted this morning and laid eyes on one of our targets. We hunted about 250 yards, 300 yards um, behind where we are now. Same place we hunted last Sunday afternoon and Monday morning. As you guys saw in the last blog, we didn't see any deer Sunday afternoon. We came in here for a short hunt Monday morning before leaving. Didn't see any deer. That camera had been the most active. And uh, a couple days ago, we had a picture of this buck in the morning at 7 a.m. Uh, that was just about 150 yards from that spot. So we decided to come in here this morning and we laid eyes on him. It's a buck we're calling Chief. It's a really nice mature 10 and he's actually still in velvet. So that's pretty cool, but he's one of the more mature bucks in the area. There's actually six different bucks that I would consider four or older right here. We mentioned a few of them last time, but Bucky's probably the biggest racked one. Then there's Bullwinkle, there's a wide eight, there's a couple narrower, kind of taller bucks. And then there's this chief buck that is, I think the only one that's still in velvet. And then he's the one we laid eyes on this morning coming over this ridge in front of us. This ridge is about 150 yards now and he worked down into this draw. So I'm hoping that tonight he works his way back out and we can get a shot at him. Not tonight, hopefully he'll repeat what he did this morning and we'll already be set up. We actually bought an old used farm trailer in Iowa and hauled it over here and got our redneck on a trailer stand mounted up midday today. And so we were able to come out here and get this set up where we want it. And uh, now we're hunting. It's about six o'clock. We've got two and a half hours to go. It's 89 degrees with the southeast wind, so about 10 degrees cooler than last weekend. There's a front blowing through tonight. Pressure's on the rise. High tomorrow's like 83. So pretty, pretty decent conditions. Um, we're hoping for some good activity tonight. And hopefully Chief shows up and hasn't rubbed his velvet off. What do you think? Um, I'm really excited and hopefully I get something. I really like to get cheap, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind like just getting a buck because as my dad said, our last time here was pretty slow. So hopefully I just get something down. Yeah, hopefully they come out. There's a lot of targets, you know. Yeah. Anyway, we're excited to be back in Kansas and uh, this is the last weekend of youth. So we're uh, counting down the hours here. Let's get it done. Let's go, Rob.
I think he's hurt pretty bad. Put another shell in. He's going. He's, he's going, going down, he's honey. Going down, <laughs> you smoked him, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> they go down. Oh, you did it, honey. <laughs> yes. Just like that. I was so nervous because the last time with JT, it was just. It's nerve wracking when you're going to shoot, huh? Especially when the last time, like, you didn't find the animal and then you started limping. And yeah, yeah I know you made a great shot, obviously. I mean, he, he's I already dead. I the offside leg, but then I moved a little. And I did like kind of middle, but a little lower. Yeah. And I tried to do the one hair thing. It's a little hard for me. You did perfect. He's already <laughs> dead. You did perfect. And you did it by yourself. You did it by yourself. I'm so glad. You got a buck down. Yeah. You got a buck down in Kansas. Tag filled. <sighs> I'm so excited for you. Hey, Mama. Hey. I shot Buck. Yeah, it's a oh. it's my first double throw patch. This has a double throw patch. Oh, cool! That's unique. Hi guys, I just got my first Kansas buck, and it was really nerve wracking. I was really nervous because it was the same scenario as JT, and the rain got us last time, so I was just really nervous, and I didn't want to make um a, I don't know like a back shot, but. He went down, like, he just stumbled and went down. He made a perfect shot. He didn't go 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, Literally, maybe went 30. <laughs> it's really interesting. You know, we've, we've had a camera down in this draw, and it, it had seemed like deer were coming from uh, this direction from our left, but this morning we saw Chief going into this draw, so we're kind of set up looking this way, and I just kept peeking out of this window here, and then we were down to the last 15 minutes probably which with 90 degree temps, 89 degree temps, we were expecting kind of last minute movement. And I looked over and there he was, and he was just crossing the ridge, heading in. And it was probably 80, 85 yard shot. And uh, you could hear Bella's heart beating. <laughs> yeah. um, and I uh, mean, you made a great shot. He didn't go far at all. He went down and we're just super pumped to have a buck down in Kansas. He's yeah. been really patient, um, past those younger bucks, the first sit, and it's been hot. We haven't been seen very much and uh, she's stuck through it all. We've been hunting mornings and evenings, which has been a little little strange to do this early, but um, it's worked out. We got a buck on the ground, and yeah. I'm excited to go look at it. Me too. Oh, found him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's the, that's the nine with the tips that almost touch. <laughs> An old nine pointer. This is my first Kansas buck and I'm super pumped. He didn't go far and we walked right on him and I'm really happy that I got a buck after our slow hunts. As Bella mentioned, we walked right up on him. He was uh, right where we thought we saw him fall over. I was wrong in the blind saying we didn't know this deer, you know. I thought he was a 10 pointer when I saw him walking through the field, but uh, this is a, one of the bucks we were trying to target. Big body deer, he's a nine pointer and his, his tips almost touch. He's got the double throat patch. And uh, we have quite a few pictures of him here in the draw where he was coming out of. So pretty cool to be one of the ones that we were actually kind of had on the list. And uh, obviously Bella made a great shot. And that's something she's been struggling with a little bit, her confidence level, even though she's she's a great shot. After last year with JT, that's, that's kind of stuck with her. And you heard her talking about that right after she shot. We were just uh, examining him when we walked up and he was absolutely perfect. Came out the front shoulder there and obviously didn't go very far. So super happy to be successful here in Kansas during youth season and ready to get back to Iowa. We have a long drive back. We're gonna probably sleep here and take off in the morning. And then next weekend is uh, youth season in Iowa. So we'll see if Bella can't double up here in September before any of us even go hunting. I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for watching Midwest Whitetail. And we'll see you back next week. <laughs>